Here are two examples of continuity versus uniform continuity on all of R. I'm using two functions, x squared and 2x plus 1. And I'm going to look at just some really nice points. I'm going to check to see that this is that x squared continues at, at all the integers, n, positive integers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, and 100. And I'm going to see where the delta values are. Then I'm going to do the same thing for 2x plus 1. And the way I, we do this is just say I need, right, I need x squared minus n squared has to be less than epsilon when x minus n is less than delta. Well, let's tease this apart a little bit. This is equal to x plus n, x minus n. Oh, but I need a bound on, I need a bound on x plus n. Well, let's just make sure, I'm gonna put a restriction on delta to get a sense of what this is. Min, 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 min. So I'm gonna put restriction on all these. I'm gonna just say that the biggest delta can be is one. So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict the interval. Here's n. I can only look at n minus one to n plus one. So x has to be somewhere in here. Those are the only x's I'm gonna consider. x plus n times x minus n. That gives me control over what this is. But this gives me a bound. Right, then that gives me x is less than n plus one plus n times x minus n, and that's equal to two n plus one times x minus n, and that looks almost like my delta statement. I want this to be less than epsilon, so I should force x minus n to be less than epsilon over two n plus one. Oh, so that's what I need right there. N, uh, at n, you're going to need delta to be between 1, to be the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 2n plus 1. So that gives me, for at 1, I need epsilon over 3. At 2, I need uh, epsilon over 5. At 3, I need epsilon over 7. This is not nice. At 4, I need epsilon over 9. Uh, at 100, I need epsilon over 201. So, to summarize here, what I need is I need delta at n. I need delta equal to the min of 1 and epsilon over 2n plus 1. Now, what does that look like on the drawing? What that means is if I look at a bunch of n's, like 1, 5, 10, 100, Etc. Maybe this is a thousand. What's going to happen is that if you look at the delta intervals, at one you get like epsilon over three, roughly, like that. At five you're going to get epsilon over, I don't know, eleven, which is much smaller. At ten you're going to get epsilon over twenty-one, which is ridiculously small. At one hundred you're basically going to get a really tiny one. Now at a thousand you're going to get almost no nothing at all. So you start with a big interval, get smaller, 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 smaller as you go left to right. Let's contrast that with what's going on here. What's going on here is that uh, I need, once again, I need 2x plus 1 minus 2n plus 1 has to be less than epsilon whenever x minus n is less than delta. Well, what happens here, this gives me, oh, this just boils down to x times 2 minus n, which is less than epsilon. Oh, x minus n has to be less than epsilon over 2 which tells me epsilon over two is gonna work for all of these. So it doesn't depend where you are, which means if I do, right, here's one, here's five, here's 10, here's 100, here's 1,000. So, if I want to draw in the epsilon intervals, I just need, oh, there's one epsilon interval, there's another epsilon interval, same size, another epsilon interval, 10, same size, another, oh, these should be delta intervals, same size, the delta interval is always the same. So once again, notice these delta intervals get smaller as you go out to the right. These delta intervals always stay the same. So this is uniformly continuous, and this is not uniformly continuous, but it is continuous, and that's the difference.